Welcome to Pittsburgh. This is Douglas Anderson. Doug is a Pittsburgher through and through. He was born and raised in the city. He graduated from the Pittsburgh Public Schools. And afterwards, he went on to Duquesne University for undergrad and got his master's degree from Carnegie Mellon University, both located in Pittsburgh. For the last eight years, Doug has been the deputy controller of the city, working to ensure financial stewardship for his city. Doug grew up in Homewood, a small community in the east end of Pittsburgh, which in the early 20th century was an affluent, multicultural community. However, in the middle of the 20th century, both white flight and the, the relocation of black people in Pittsburgh contributed to problems that are still plaguing Homewood today. As you can see, 44% of the lots in Homewood are vacant compared to only 10% citywide, with many more falling into disrepair. Additionally, the city of Pittsburgh and Homewood specifically are struggling with segregation. About 26% of the city of Pittsburgh's population is black, but over 92% of the population in Homewood is black. The children of Homewood are living in disproportionate poverty. 92% of the children in Homewood qualify for free or reduced price lunch, compared to 39% of the children citywide. As we know, crime correlates highly with poverty. Violent crime in Homewood is over four times higher than the average in Pittsburgh. All of these factors conspire to undermine educational opportunities for children in Homewood. This is the Academy at Westinghouse, the local 6th to 12th grade school for children at home. On screen, you see the results citywide on last year's Pennsylvania State Test. Next to it in blue, you see the results at the Academy at Westinghouse. Proficiency rates citywide are at least twice as high in every tested subject compared to students at Westinghouse and Homewood with the greatest disparities coming in reading and math. This inequity cannot continue. We began with Doug because he is living evidence of what is possible. The children in Homewood are capable and talented, and we have a responsibility to educate every single one of them, not just Doug. Education becomes the practice of freedom, the means by which men and women critically and creatively deal with reality and discover how to participate in the transformation of their world. Welcome to Bridge Leadership Academy, serving grades six through eight. Our, we envision our students as empowered leaders, able to transform Homewood, Pittsburgh, and beyond. I'm Abby Wilson. I'm DeLorean Burton. I'm Giovanna Hackman. I'm Stephanie Witt. And I'm Ryan Gessler. We believe that our students become empowered through a rigorous academic core that focuses on literacy, solving problems, and leadership skill development. Once you learn to read, you will be forever free. At Bridge Leadership Academy, learning is so much more than decoding words on a page. Our students engage in a rigorous core of academic classes. In, e in every course, our curriculum emphasizes reading, writing, and speaking. In our two-hour humanities course, our model emphasizes close reading and writing for art. Our emerging leaders gain the skills to critically, uh, to critically analyze text and other sources. And as situations demand, students will learn how to communicate efficiently and with robust detail, with plain spoken clarity or captivating flip. In our two-hour math and science block, students are expected to read to develop content knowledge and deconstruct problems voice compelling arguments, and write to convey, convey their findings. Students' academic work culminates in a portfolio, a compelling record of their academic growth at Bridge Leadership Academy. We only think when we are confronted with problems. Units at Bridge Leadership Academy are built around the Buck Institute problem-based learning model. All of our units, we want our students to think like mathematicians, historians, and scientists. And the curriculum that we have put in place to do this, along with the leadership experiences that we give them, 
all work towards the growth of their problem-based learning. The curriculum that we use are the iQuest for Science, Eureka Math, Odell for ELA, and Thinking Like a Historian. Through all of these curriculum models, our students learn to solve problems. There are so many figures in history that did not believe they could make a change, and they did. Leadership implies action. It requires that you take your skills and your passion and you do something. Alongside our academic core, students participate in a leadership elective along with a leadership practicum that allows them to learn skills and then apply them in real world settings. At Bridge, we start small. We know at 11, students are just beginning their journey into adolescence. Developmentally, this is the perfect time for students to start our leadership skill and practicum model. Starting in sixth grade, students will take one elective each trimester with their cohort. <clears throat> they learn core leadership competencies like self-awareness, group dynamics, effective communication and debate, and public speaking. And they get to practice these skills in an aligned practicum experience. This initial sixth grade curriculum sets the stage for our, to facilitate our restorative justice program by learning about themselves and their group. Through community building circles, we lay the necessary foundation for restorative justice to be strong culturally in our school. Seventh grade is a transition year for students. And at Bridge, we have carefully crafted our seventh grade leadership curriculum sequence to include meaningful interactions with peers and building autonomy in a safe space. Leadership classes in seventh grade are integrated into an arts curriculum that requires students to consider the effects of marketing, plan and implement projects, and consider how individuals and groups make decisions. We know that in seventh grade, relationships with parents and teachers can take a hit. And that's why we require students to use their skills to develop projects that engage the community and their families. They'll start student-led conferences, as well as designing an engaging activity with their advisory. This activity will bring families into our school, and students will know that what they're doing is making a difference. In the eighth grade year, we add Latin for Leadership every other day, allowing our students to gain valuable preparation for vocabulary acquisition and many future languages. We want our students to be able to be actively prepared for whatever high school choice they might make. Other leadership electives include a goal achievement class, which teaches students to use data to track their progress towards a goal that they wish to achieve, as well as a class on activating resources and financial planning. Finally, students participate in an intercultural awareness course to think critically about the world in which they live. During this time in practicum, Students will create and implement a budget based on a need of a project. But during this time in the practicum, students will create and implement a project based uh, on a need in the homeland community, taking into account all the leadership lessons and practice to this point. Leadership Pittsburgh, one of the community partners, will support us in matching students to other community partners to implement their projects. How does all this happen? The structure of the school is designed to support student leadership from their classes to their advisory curriculum. We start by taking the 100 students in each grade and breaking them into communities of 50. From there, each set of students are grouped into cohorts and for academic classes and leadership electives. They are also grouped within their community into smaller advisories that stay together all three years. Having advisories, cohorts, and communities allows students to take on leadership roles within increasingly larger contexts and provides numerous opportunities for leadership in different settings. A leader sees greatness in other people. He nor she can be much of a leader if all she sees is herself. At Bridge Leadership Academy, we not only believe in empowering our students, but we believe in empowering our teachers as well. We do this through providing purposeful professional development, giving our teachers them flexibility, and collaboration and decision making. Let's start with professional development. We know that if we expect our students to engage in certain practices, we must first develop our teachers in these areas and hold them to the same expectations. 
Our leadership team will create professional development around problem-based learning, productive struggle, and integrating literacy across the content areas. We are also strong advocates for observation and feedback and using this to empower our teachers. Teachers at Bridge Leadership Academy will have external opportunities as well to continue their development as professionals. We will provide stipends for teachers to take sabbaticals during the summer so they can embark on their own professional development journey in areas they feel are suited to perfect their craft. Another way we empower teachers is by giving them flexibility. Teachers are allotted two-hour blocks so they can maximize instruction and teach lessons that allow students opportunities to fully engage in the problem-based learning model. At Bridge Leadership Academy, we recognize that empowerment is not exclusive to our students. Teachers at Bridge Leadership Academy need to be empowered to lead. Teachers are entrusted with making significant instructional decisions with their content level and grade level equivalent teachers using all the data available to them. We have strategically aligned our teachers to maximize collaboration and drive student growth. Teachers will meet with their colleagues to uh, uh, their colleagues to uh, in their content areas to align their curricular decisions among grade levels. Our grade level teams will work to strengthen the culture of collaboration across the grade and create techniques to empower students regardless of content class. Both team structures model ideal cooperation among teacher colleagues that we want all bridge students to develop as they work to become intellectual problem solvers for the future. Like Ellison, we believe that education is a matter of building bridges. We began with Doug because he has a case study in what is possible. But again, we're not satisfied with one Doug. As his son Ashton and the children of Homewood grow up, it is our responsibility to empower them to be the transformational leaders they all can be. Literacy. Problem solving. Leadership. Empowerment. We are Bridge Leadership Academy. Thank you. Bob Paul, nice. Uh, so I'm gonna jump in. Uh, great job, guys. A uh, couple of things that I wanna wanna point out. Uh, again, Ryan, super conversational. Um, really sets the tone, sets the pace. Really nicely done. Um, um, if we go back to the beginning slides where Ryan's talking about uh, some of the percentages. Um, I think it's actually the one where we compare, uh, yeah, like some of these, right? Yeah. I'm wondering if we can shrink the font down a little bit um, to make sure that it's centered, right? Um, On the within numbers. the column. What's that? On the numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we see it a lot in the slide um, comparing the test scores. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so if we can just get that inside the column. I think you guys took the, the, took the feedback from Tuesday about the way to present the data. I think it's so much cleaner and so much easier to understand. Um, really, really well done. Um, something that I noticed, particularly when you guys were uh, introducing yourselves, my name is Abby, my name is DeLorean, and something that you need to think about, um, and we're gonna see it tomorrow, are the microphone transitions, right? So the microphones are gonna be live, and so as you transition them, it can be tough. So maybe at that point, you wanna think about leading into the microphone, right? Just something to think about. And you'll have time to kind of play with this a little bit tomorrow. If it doesn't feel right right away, okay, maybe we can try it this way. To that point, Nicole. Yep. So I can't hold cards. Yeah, I have. I have. A, I actually have a note that Steph should stand at the podium because of all the items in her hand. So yeah. um, what you guys are going to see, if you're looking at the stage, right? So the podium where we put the laptop, and it has a stationary mic okay. that's connected right to the podium. Okay. And then, um, so if we're looking at the stage podium is where Ryan is standing, right? Um, a couple of steps over from where Ryan is standing right now, maybe the edge of the table in the front of the room, no, this, this oh, front table, oh, okay. um, there will be a cordless mic. It will be in a microphone stand, okay? So either you can step up to the stand or you can take it out and hold it, okay? And then the third stand will be on the opposite side of the stage, on the opposite side of the screen. Again, a microphone stand with a cordless mic that either you can adjust the microphone stand and you can step up to it, or you can remove the microphone and talk. Will it be too weird for me to be speaking from behind the podium? No, uh, most teams usually have a okay. person who is okay. 
responsible for clicking uh, there because they also have uh, the laptop in front of them okay. so they can watch the transitions instead of constantly kind of trying to crane and look at the screen. Yep. Um, I think you guys did an, an awesome job with including uh, the three pillars in the bridge, right? And um, DeLorean, were you nervous? Very. Okay. Um, well, you did good anyway. Um, but you are speaking really quickly, and Steph was having a hard time actually transitioning the slides to keep up with what you were saying. Um, so if we were all standing up there, all four of us, and Caroline were talk Caroline was talking, and we were all like, <laughs> um, smile. It's supposed to be fun. Um, you guys had kind of a little bit of a terrified look on your faces at different points. Um, there's much more clarity between the leadership skills and the practical experience, right? Like very clearly understand um, how these two kind of connect. Um, leadership seven, more specifically, I don't know exactly what we can do with this slide, but I feel like there's a lot of narrative from Abby specifically on this slide. Like there's a, a ton of information. I don't know maybe if it can be broken out into a second slide, um, but um, there sure might be, there or might be the case. Of, what If we cut part of what, I mean, maybe it doesn't all have to be there. Yeah, the same I, I think honestly, um, if, I'm, if I'm completely honest, I think when there's that much narrative on one slide, I think people do start to kind of zone out. Okay, um, community A and B. Um, so I think we get a much better sense of what community A and B looks like, right? Um, but we still don't have a sense of the academic program. The first time we see the academic program is on the slide that's called um, flexible, fle no, flexibility with professional development. That's the first time that we see kind of, go to that slide for us. There. That's the first time that we see like that students are actually engaged outside of. Um, I thought we had that at the beginning. Leadership <laughs> skills and practicum experience. Yes, yeah, Elon talks about um, like the humanities, the LA social studies. Just they don't have the time on them, but those are the courses that we're on. Okay, so, so what I would say is, um, it, I don't think it's explicitly clear um, about what their academic program looks like up until that point. I felt like, wow, there's this really heavy emphasis on the leadership skills and the practicum experience. Mm -hmm. But I think even, I actually think it's okay to replicate a slide um, if it's that important. So you might wanna have some variation of that up front um, for that slide when you're talking about reading, writing, and speaking. Okay. okay? Um, something that I wanna point out to everyone, and um, this is not an attempt to kind of put you guys on the spot, but at different points in time, Ryan, Steph, and DeLorean kind of stumbled a little bit, right? And what did you do? You kept going, right? You kept going, and it's fine, and the others just kind of stood there, and, and exactly, there are gonna be points in time where your head is moving a little bit faster than your mouth might be, and you get stuck on something, and it's okay, right? It's fine, that's why you have your cards there, so even if you have it memorized, when you get up to speak in front of all these people, you know what, you might be particularly nervous on that day, right? That's fine, you have then everything that you're saying on these cards right in front of you, all right? The other thing to you that I said to your team is a couple years ago someone dropped their cards but they weren't numbered. So make sure that you number your cards also. Um, but guys, really awesome. Oh, shit. Wait, we can go back up.